Hey guys, today we're coming to you with the 10 commandments of kite surfing. Commandment number one, thy shall not wear thy board shorts over thy wetsuit. Would you wear sandals over your five millimeter booties? Then why are you wearing board shorts in five degree weather over your six millimeter wetsuit? Don't even get me started on board leashes. Aside from the crime against fashion you're committing, it's just not practical. One funny justification we've heard for wearing board shorts over a wetsuit is that it actually preserves the life of a wetsuit. But if that's actually true, then why aren't we all wearing long pants and long sleeve shirts over our wetsuits? Let's consider the equivalent from a female's point of view. Commandment number two, thou shall not think they are too cool for school or safety. While it's not often required by law, a lot of kiters will often forego their safety equipment and wear at their own risk. This includes a life jacket, impact vest, helmet, hook knife, or even just the right clothing or protective wear, like a wetsuit, hat, gloves, booties, sunscreen, or rash guard. The consequences of doing so are pretty obvious, so we're not gonna labor this point. It's important to remember it's not just the wind that poses a threat to your safety. Things like cold temperature or even your own equipment can be just as dangerous. You also don't wanna kite further than you can swim back. Shit happens, gear fails, the wind dies, and if you're far out, the swim could literally take you hours. A good rule of thumb is one minute of kiting usually equals about 60 minutes of swimming. Of course, this is dependent on conditions, but it is a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. Something that is as equally important as your personal safety is the safety of others. Stay out and far away from swimming zones. Stay clear of swimmers, beachgoers, marina entrances, boats, and kite school students. Don't assume anyone knows where you're going or what you're about to do. Commandment number three, thou shall know the language. Nuking, skunk, white cap, session, Russian launch, hot launch, kook. Kite surfing has its own unique language with regional variations. Good luck trying to understand what people are saying on the beach if you don't know the language. Commandment number four, thou shall not be selfish. If you're heading to the beach and you're bringing just one beer, don't be rude, bring a couple for your friends too. Sharing is caring when it comes to kite surfing in all aspects. If you have an I don't care attitude, you won't last long on the beach. So help your fellow kiters launch and land. Don't suffer from temporary blindness. Take turns sharing waves and flicks. Something that we've noticed over time is that the more kiters there are on the beach, the less likely they're willing to help each other. Call it human nature or diffusion of responsibility, but the fact of the matter is we can't assume that someone else will help out a fellow kiter just because you don't feel like it at that moment. Treat others how you want to be treated. Off the water, consider others who are sharing the spot too. Wrapping up your lines and keeping the setup spot clear helps others get in and out without any issue. Picking up after yourself and leaving the beach clean is also good etiquette. We can't forget that special subset of kiters who like to show everyone on the beach that they're 100% independent. They insist on self-launching and self-landing, even when there's helping hands available. We've seen it time and time again, where kiters refuse help and things go wrong in front of a captive audience of kiters who offered help. This subset tends to kite alone, which poses even more of a threat if something goes wrong and no one is there to witness or help. Let's keep it safe, offer help, and accept help when need be. Don't kite alone. Always bring a buddy. It's way more fun that way. Commandment number five, thou shall keep their schedule wide open. <laughs> A good rule of thumb is to RSVP maybe to any event that is not kiting related. If the forecast isn't out yet, you just can't be too sure. Give yourself some wiggle room and trust us. You don't wanna to commit to any event that is not kiting related. Believe me when I say you are not gonna be a good party guest if it's windy outside and you're just stuck watching the tree branches sway in the wind and you know you're missing an epic session. It's the worst. Don't do it. Commandment number six. Thou shall take the appropriate steps before every session. This includes knowing the forecast for the day, spot conditions, as well as doing a careful pre-check of equipment before you launch. The weather can change very quickly and storms or squalls can pop up in a matter of minutes. Knowing the forecast and what to expect is important to avoid dangerous conditions. Knowing cloud formations is also very handy. If you're not sure what's coming, get out, don't wait. Pre-check your gear by going over your equipment carefully before each session. You'll want to check for things like small knots on your line, wear and tear, or even small pinholes or tears on your kite. Don't go out on gear that has any questionable issues. Oftentimes a small tear can turn into a big problem. Tighten screws on your board. And obviously rig an appropriate kite for the wind and your size. Launching a large kite in high wind is a recipe for disaster. If you're not sure, talk to other kiters on the beach or opt for a smaller kite. 
You'll want to make sure that you're properly fueled and hydrated, and it's also not a bad idea to do some stretching before you get on the water. If you're a seasonal kiter, maintaining your fitness year-round will also help. Knowing the launching and landing zone and the local protocol. Scope out spots for obstacles, trees, people, playgrounds, pets, poles, power lines, streets and fences, and any potential wind shadows. It's also important to know the conditions. Are there a large rocks or sharp coral underwater? Is it a shallow or deep spot? Are there strong currents? Are there trees on the shoreline? Take careful note of your surroundings and know your entrance and exit plan. Talking to local kiters is key here. Kiteboarders are some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet, and we all just want to enjoy the day and kiting without any conflict. So tap into the local knowledge and make some amazing friends while you're at it. Commandment number seven, thou shall obey the right of way. There are a lot of spoken and unspoken rules when it comes to kiting that your instructor probably should have mentioned to you day one, lesson one. Sometimes these deserve repeating. When on the water, follow the right of way rules. If passing downwind, keep your kite low. If passing upwind, keep your kite high. If you're not sure, the person riding to the right always has the right of way. Kiters getting on the water have priority over those who are already on the water. When turning or about to perform a trick, check both ways to make sure it's clear. There are many more rules, and as a kiter, you should know them and abide by them. Commandment number eight. Thou shall know thy skill level and not overestimate it. Kiters who have been kiting since the beginning of time may think that the rules don't apply to them, and both newbies and intermediates can be overconfident with their skills and act recklessly. Some of the things we've witnessed and honestly been guilty of ourselves is jumping too close to the beach, dropping the kite on the beach, jumping too close to others, or just doing risky maneuvers that have the potential of going really, really wrong. One of the biggest mistakes that we've seen is kiters going out in conditions or at spots that are above their skill level and getting themselves into trouble. This can include kiting in different directions of wind. For example, if you can kite comfortably side shore at a spot, onshore or side off can be a completely different story. This puts you as a rider at serious risk and it doesn't make for a fun session. It may also inconvenience fellow riders who put themselves at risk trying to help you. In serious situations, you could get yourself hurt, you could get the spot banned, or even worse, you could get someone else hurt. It's your responsibility to know if the conditions are beyond your skill level. Commandment number nine, thou shall not lie about peeing in their wetsuit. There are those that pee in their wetsuit and there are those that lie about peeing in their wetsuit. There is that brief moment of time where you do buy a new wetsuit and you wanna keep it new, but let's be real, that doesn't last forever. It's perfectly okay because stripping off your wetsuit is annoying and giving yourself a bladder infection is just uncomfortable. Plus, how are you gonna boost to maximum height if you've got a full bladder weighing you down? So just go for it. Pee in your wetsuit, flush it out, and be good with it. Just be sure to wash your wetsuit once in a while with soap so it doesn't start to smell. Also, don't pee in a rental wetsuit, that's just gross. But also maybe don't trust that the person before you didn't pee in it. Commandment number 10, thou shall know their life is way more important than their gear. In a dangerous situation, pull safety or double safety and release your kite. On this note, know how your safety system works and be prepared to use it in an emergency. Practicing self-rescues is also not a bad idea. One safety tip that we recently implemented is to have a short leash so that your second safety is in front of you rather than behind you. Just imagine the case where you do need to use your second safety and release your kite. If that's located behind you, that just adds on more time to struggle to try and release the kite, which can be extremely dangerous. We've mentioned this before, but it's worth repeating. One way to decrease emergency situations is to inspect your gear regularly, make it a habit of going over everything closely and paying attention, and performing preventative maintenance on your equipment to make sure it's functioning properly. Obviously, this is going to help prevent having issues on the water and wrecking a session, and it's also going to help to increase the lifespan of your gear. All right, guys, there you have it, our 10 commandments for kite surfing. Let us know if you agree, disagree, or if we've missed anything in the comments below. As always, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more like this coming your way soon. All right, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.